Hey everyone, welcome to yet another of our little reviews. Today we are bringing you the one and only Scary Movie. As we've done actually quote-unquote scary movies before. If you want to call Santa Sly scary, and we have Halloween Ends, which I wouldn't call scary. But here we are. So, it's me, Mitchell, <laughs> Pub Midnight, whatever you want to say. Uh, once again, joined by the one and only... Um, <laughs> one and only um. I'm joined by um. I'm joined by um Elia, also known as the Obsidian Nook, Petal ASMR, whatever the fuck you want to be called as well. <laughs> I fucked my intro. Yeah, you did fuck your intro. <laughs> so we're here with scary movie this week. We're bringing bringing you that a uh, very outdated film, as I found out. It's 23 years old. It's 23 <laughs> years old. Like, yikes. And you, like, half of this film, you can tell. Wait, that was done before you were born. Only a year. Oh, wow. You, like, you know, like, when you, when, like, you realize you're born then, and then you have a mind boggling moment, and I'm having that right now. Yeah. Because I was born, I was born in 1996. I just wouldn't have been able to watch it. I mean, yeah, that's fair. And you weren't here. Yeah, I wasn't even con- conceived yet. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I might, I might be, and I don't know the specifics. But uh, yeah, 23 years old, and boy, does it fucking show it. Some of the references, the jokes, and unfortunately, some of the characters. Are we doing the whole lot? We, yeah, that's a good point. Um, Of course, we're doing the first one, because the first one's probably the best one. Yeah. Like easily. We'll definitely cover um whichever one has Tim Curry and to take my strong hand. I have a feeling it's the second one that happens. I think it's the second one. Yeah. Because then like I think the rest have Charlie Sheen in it. Mm. And it's like yeah, maybe They not. did actually they did do a new one of scary movie, didn't they, a few years back with did they? um yeah, with Ashley um Ashley Tisdale. Oh God, the Ashley, Ashley Tisdale was um, High School Musical, wasn't it? Yeah, but I remember watching like them with it because they were taking the mick out of, um, you know, like uh, was it Paranormal Activity? It was. Oh like, yeah, yeah, I know the exact. That wasn't too recent, but I know what you no, mean. I don't think we have that one, so we may have to go and get. We will have to it. track that down. Yeah. Somehow. Uh, yeah, as I say, some of the characters in this are very outdated stereotypes. Mm. Like, well, I've a few new things. Oh, uh, well, very, very, very quickly, because I have to do this in every review. Uh, spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. If you haven't seen this film that's 23 years old, and you haven't, like, even, like, this is the internet. Are like, you serious? Everyone's in scary movies. Basically, if you haven't seen it, what are you doing? Uh, if you haven't seen I Know What You Did Last Summer and Scream, mainly, like, this is basically the same film, like, those two films mishmashed. So, spoilers, I guess, for those two, because the scenes are from the real horror films, and they've just, like, replaced the characters and maybe made them, like, funny. But, yeah, the, the only issue... I found a lot was which is outdated is the character of Ray, who is heavily, heavily used as a as the stereotype gay character, but by the end he like is revealed to not be gay. He's the one in white chicks, isn't he? Yeah, he is portrayed by Marlon. Yeah, Marlon. Marlon. No, not Marlon. Um, I've got him somewhere. No, what? I've wrote both of them down. It's Marlon or Sean. I can't remember. I think it's Sean. Basically, if you'd seen, for anybody, and I think a lot of people would have seen White Chicks, the one who plays a police officer with blonde hair, and then the one who's in this scary movie who acts kind of gay but isn't. They're yeah, Marlon. In... Marlon plays Ray. Short... Is it Sean? I can't honestly. Yeah, There's a lot. They are both in White Chicks. Um... No. No, I'm so lost of which one's which. 
They all look very similar. Hold on. I'm just going to have to get this up on Google and just to remind yeah, myself. For the ladies out there, I'm trying to persuade him to write it. What do you mean for the ladies? Because it's like... Okay, Marlon, pla- Marlon is shorty. Sean is Ray. Right, okay. Let me... I will change that in my notes, but I've got a cat on my lap. So, yeah, uh, technically, there's three of us doing this review. <laughs> uh, if you want to say that Silver is reviewing it with his eyes closed... <laughs> I would, he's not even listening either because he's dead. <laughs> and he's he's just asleep. He's just curled up. It seems every review he is in. Mm. It's like he knows we're recording and he wants to be part of it. He's so. not the the one that's the... What is it? The sticker on the video. No, he's, not, he's not the character that represents Amelia in the thumbnails. I'm sure if you go on to your Instagram, there'll be a picture of if anyone wants to see sort of my personal one yeah the youtube one no oh. or even my lego my lego one has one of them i'll I'll save you uh searching i won't put it in the description but there's a picture of him out there somewhere and if there's enough if there's enough demand then oh well, wait sil- silver on instagram actually uh, um at silver the kitty or something 18 yeah. So uh, it used to be called Silver the Old Man. No, it Long John Silver. Silver. No, yeah, they t- they took him down. Mm. They took down his account but for some reason. Since we changed his username. At like... Silver the Kitty eighteen, and that ju- that just made me think. He every cat has been featured on the channel in one way or another. Yeah. He's been in the he's been in the reviews. Uh, Tiny is in one of the Lego videos, mm-hmm. and Smitten is in one of the upcoming Lego videos, and Stasi's in your thumbnail, mm-hmm. the thumbnails you're a part of. Anyway. So the cats are a, a big part of our family. So. Yeah, the cats are a big part of our lives, so they're a big part of the channel now. <laughs> they will live on forever, <laughs> one way or another, even though you will never see or hear Silver, unless... Unless one day in the future a camera is used in any... Well, I can't be asked because I hate how I look on camera. So, anyway, should we actually get back to the <laughs> film while we're uh, with it? So, yeah, spoilers ahead. Uh, bad language, obviously, because it's me. So, yeah. So, the, our opening scene is exactly... It's like the exact rip-off of, of Scream. Mm-hmm. Like even even the house is weirdly similar to the film. Like, it's like I don't know if they've used the same set or something, but it looks mm-hmm. perfectly recreated. If it isn't, yeah, I I literally only have two nags with that scene. Do you want to know where they are? Well, yeah. Now that you've said it. Okay, so someone explain to me how you can have popcorn on because they do the popcorn. It comes in like this silver kind of tin, do not it? You know that's how they really do it. How you can do it? Yeah, but should it really be that massive to the point where it's like where it explodes? Where it's, you know the dome's kind of so like up there. It's not when it gets massive, but you can pop popcorn. It doesn't go that high. Yeah, but it went that high. It does go it's ridiculous, crazy. but that's for comedy. But so I was just like, and I've always been fascinated by that one particular scene. Just watching it from like years ago. What's, it, what's your second nitpick? The banana. The banana. We'll get to the banana. It's it's part of a joke. Mm. So yeah, I've got I've wrote down making popcorn on the stove, which you've addressed. Uh, we meet our Drew Barrymore standing, who is named Drew Decker. I don't know if that's a joke or something, but it's, it's she's obviously called Drew because of Drew Barrymore and Scream, who her death is famous because of how she was in all the marketing for it, and then they kill her off straight away. Well, not straight away. Uh, she's played by Carmen Electra, who is famous for doing these sort of... I think she does a lot of these, like, scary movie-style films. Like, um, epic movie... I think she's in more of these. Oh, my God. I've watched epic movies times, and I that she was in. I think she was the white. I think she's the queen. She was also in that. Um, she was. I fucking love Meet the Spartans. That's such yeah. a dumb film, but. I did use that. Epic movie. Yeah, she's in scary movie, epic movie, scary movie four. 
just all of these like weird fucking outdated films mm. that just get pumped out to cash in on something else. We don't, we don't get many of these films that take the piss out of other things now anymore. Have you noticed that? There's less parody films because films like this flooded the market. Mm. And they just became... Well, lots of people grew out of it. That sort of... That generation that had these films, like the audience for them, are now too old for them. Mm. And the generation that came after doesn't like that's not that sort of humor that resonates with them anymore yeah it's a shame because those as i say those piss take ones were real gold weren't they i mean there is still gold these as i say these films haven't aged well but films like airplane i fucking love airplane it's a timeless stupid film and you've got um naked gun naked naked gun is fantastic that has the same guy from airplane it is the dumb, <laughs> on-the-nose comedy, wordplay, puns, like, everything is just stupid. We'll, we might do them another day, but let's get this one out of the way first. So, of course, she gets the call from our killer. I think he's called Ghoulface in this, rather than Ghostface. Because, obviously, Ghostface is known for, um... Is known for scream and i don't know if they could yeah. really give him the same um because you can tell like the mask like a slight different the mask is slightly different but um let me just have a look let me see if it's oh this they've changed how that works so i think it was called ghoul face just to not be sued basically okay we're going into a... okay that's not this film anymore but, um, that's just, yeah, anyway, that was a, I might be able to find it. Uh, da, 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 da. I have no way of filling the air. It doesn't say, but still, who's James Vanderbilt? Oh, that's the guy, oh, okay, Any, anyway, we'll get that. Well, if anybody knows the, like, the... They never really address name. it, he's just... He's just Ghostface, and he'll probably he's called Ghostface or something further on in this. But um, excuse me. So she gets a phone call from Ghostface as the usual. Like, what's your favorite scary movie? She lists off some films that aren't scary because, haha. Yeah. Not very good. <laughs> and she she gets threatened by him, and she's like, "Oh, my boyfriend's coming. He's black, and he's gonna kick your ass." And, Nice west. <laughs> I want to see your insights. Take a page thirteen. He's like nice. It's like the thing that I found funny about this is he's got a porn mag and he's like, I want to see who I'm looking at. Yeah. And then it's just like he wants, and then he's like, Oh, I want to see your insights. And she's like, Turn a page fifty. What is it? Fifty four. And then he's like, Oh no, he's the idiot. I'm just like. It's because it's because in Scream, obviously, he's, he's like, I want to know who I'm looking at because he can see her, <laughs> not because he's looking at a porn mag. So I thought that was kind of a bit... I don't know, I thought it was a bit weird, but it's kind of funny. Yeah, and her so-called boyfriend is out on the porch dressed in this... Like, he's in, like, a spandex (laughs) suit with, like, a wig on because apparently he wears women's clothes. He doesn't die, surprisingly. They don't kill him. He just screams for help and then that's it. No offence, he's... Yeah, he really... (laughs) Well, he screams for his life. So then the front... Yeah, but it was a ridiculous scream for your life. Cause it was like... Is that... <laughs> you know. But yeah, uh, yeah, that's another thing that doesn't stick... Probably won't stick well with more modern audiences. It's that sort of like... It's it, like... Uh, the idea of using someone who... Oh, God. No, I'm, I'm not getting into the discussion of like trans representation but they, they like the the that sort of thing is used as a joke yeah times have changed Just yeah the humor way. has changed and that would not fly now mm. so yeah he's as i say survives the doorbell goes she answers the door with a bat and just bludgeons these little kids with it doesn't kill them but absolutely hits the shit out of them and it's like not checking on them it's like 
Sorry. So and then slams the door. Slams the door on him, yeah. So she then has this little table of weapons by the front door. It's got like a, a revolver, a frag oh. grenade, a knife and a banana. And she takes the banana because it's it goes for the stereotype of she's a... Well, she ain't even that blonde. But she's your ditzy, like, movie character that's just going to die. So she's got to be stupid. Which is also shown when she runs out of the house and there's two signs that says safety or death. And she chooses death. Mm. And it's like covered, it's got like um like a chalk outline on the floor she falls into. And she runs through the, she runs through the sprinklers as Ghostface, well, not Ghostface, pulls the, um, her clothes off. Because of course, this is, this is the 2000s where sex appeal was more prominent in films like these. It's like as well, like, as she was running through these, like, water sprinklers, it was like she had to stop and kind of wiggle her butt a bit. Yeah, she had to stop and, like, pose and rub her body. (laughs) It was like, oh, you can tell this, you can tell the audience they were going for was teenage boys. (laughs) Because it's like, it's like, half of the film is just, like, tits and weed. (laughs) So, yeah. Ghostface catches up to her, stabs her in the chest, and pulls out one of her breast implants. He goes, "Ew!" Yeah. Just chucks it. That was disgusting. That's funny. Then it's like as well, like as the car's approaching her and she's shouting her daddy, and it's yeah, like... the dad's getting road head. <laughs> like, and he, he just fucking plows her down. <laughs> and it's like, oh god. And then it's like he comes up, Danny, and then that kind of cuts there, do not it? Bring in the yeah, you get your title cards and your intro credits. Typical, really. And then we get to meet our protagonist, whose name is Cindy, because very funny, because the character's name in Scream is Sydney. Mm. Which I have heard several several times while we were watching that, I heard Bobby call her Sydney or by <laughs> mistake, and I, I couldn't get it out of my head. But Cindy is played by Anna Faris, who comes back in every film i think or if not yeah i think she does because i think like in the later film she dyes her hair blonde she goes blonde doesn't she for some reason yeah she she's also in these kind of like parody films she's in epic movie i can't i think she might be date movie she's in just these films that are just exactly what they are in the titles Mm. these So, yeah, she's famous for these sort of things. So, Cindy is played by Anna Faris, and Bobby is played by John Abrahams, or Abrams. I, d- I didn't really... I don't know him from anything. He's, he's, he's a face that I only know from... Um, from this. <laughs> I'm, it's, I could probably look at video uh, films he's been in and be like, oh, yeah, maybe, I might have heard of him. Yeah, he must have been in other things, but as you say, unless you've watched something else they've been in, they don't specifically recognise her. Yeah, so Bobby scares her, she screams, and then her a drug dealer dad comes in, and he t- he like rem- he like quizzes her on how to cut up cocaine because he's going on like a business trip to meet Pablo Escobar. And it's like as well, like if the cops come, like you if know, if the cops come, flush your stash. <laughs> Like, how are you going to, like, prepare? Oh, I've left you something in, like, the coffee grinder or something. Yeah. The coffee machine. They don't say, I can't remember if they say what it is or not, but I think it's just, like, more drugs. <laughs> so, yeah, we meet the drug dealer dad. Bobby comes in. They start, sort of, getting jiggy with it, to quote Will Smith. And this random guy pops in who, I have no fucking idea who he is. Um, I've accidentally come across him on the Wikipedia? on Wikipedia. Yeah, his name is James. I think he, he I think he was in a sitcom around this time. I really... he's he's in Dawson Creek, which is around when this came out, so it makes sense for it to be that Dawson Leary. Yeah, I didn't get what like him appearing in the window was about, and then being like, "Oh, wrong set." Because he's the actor. So he came through the window and he was like, oh, I'm on the wrong set for the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Like the wrong film set. 
As I say, I didn't even know. I still don't know. I've heard of Dawson's Creek, but this is maybe a bit niche. As I, as I said in the opener, it's full of lots of outdated references that most audiences today are going to completely miss out on. Mm, but I, I can imagine for that time, that was the funniest fucking thing anyone's ever heard. And they could they could literally do the saw jack point at the screen and be like... <gasps> like yeah, it, it just completely went over my head and... It's, it's James William Van... De- okay, that's a full name, I'm reading. James Van Der Beek. <laughs> so I, I would assume it's Dawson's Creek, but I had no idea. Never heard of that film, to be honest. It's a TV show. It's a sitcom. I it only went for like four years. Never heard of it. Or something, but as I say, it's just completely like over my head. So, yeah. Young. Young and Don. So they try and get like their shit on. <laughs> they try and get jiggy with it. But she's like... She's really hesitant because it's obviously from the very famous film Cabin in the Woods, which I really think you should watch. We should watch that. It's like it's like this, but not full of shitty jokes. Right. He's one as explained <laughs> as explained in that, it's the stereotype of you've got the virgin final girl. So obviously she's all sweet and innocent, but she'll survive because of that. Yeah. So she's very hesitant, and she has it like a chastity belt on, that's like an electric fence. I think that was interesting. So it'd be interesting. It would have just been like CGI on top of like some thin metal. But yeah, I spoiled that magic for you. So yeah, she's basically like no thanks. Scene ends after they have a bit of bicker, and so then we go to the high school. We meet. We meet like the rest of our cast, ascent. Well, a couple of members of our st- of our cast. We meet Brenda, who is oh, she returns in a. Yeah, she. She's yeah. in the second one, and she's also in the ones like... that has the signs knockoff. I think. Yeah, I think it's like third or the fourth. It's one of them, but she comes back. She's also one of our recurring cast. Uh, Brenda is played by Regina Hall. We also meet Shorty and Buffy. I think Buffy was called that because of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm -hmm. Because Buffy is a... It's a name I never hear anywhere else but Buffy the Vampire Slayer in this. (laughs) So Shorty, of course, I've already forgot if it was Sean or Marlon. Because I'm... I just can't do it. I can't fucking remember... So Shorty, of course, is played by Marlon. Okay, yeah, so I've just put Ray down as Marlon as well, because I was... Uh, so, of course, Shorty is your stoner stereotype. It, it he's li- got a comb stuck in his hair the whole time. Yeah, he's got the hair pick. If, honestly, if you had seen Cabin in the Woods, what I'm saying would make so much more sense. <laughs> you've basically got the hot character, you've got the stoner, and you've got like the best friend. Who most of them survive? So Buffy gets out of her dad's car. She's in like these sweet, innocent girl you look clothes. It's like her parents forbid her from wearing anything where she's gonna show her boobs off or wear short skirts. Yeah, but she also puts on the act that she that is the girl she is rather than she's being forced to do it mm. until her dad goes and she like tears off her clothes like and... a thin sheet of paper. She's just like. Gone. The only thing, and they disappear. The criticize about that is because I said to you, like when we were watching it, did you ask convenient how the clothes are not laying? Yeah, the continuity was a bit fucked. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that was just an oversight or not, but she just rips them off, chucks them, never like they're not even like on a pile. I mean, I can't even rip my own clothes off. How the hell do you rip clothes? It would be. <laughs> you can get tearaway pants or trousers, I should say. They're like. They're like buttoned up in the seams, so then oh, they just rip in half, essentially. You learn something new every day. Yes, you do. <laughs> so they're walking, and they, they have this random like homeless man come up to him, and he's like, Spare a dollar? And she's like, here you are, sir, a nice sandwich. And he went, I asked for a dollar, bitch, and shuts you up. It's like she was being so nice, and he was such an asshole about it. I know, so dumb. So they get to school and the news, the 
scumbag journalists who can you can basically just I could have just said journalists because everyone knows any journalists are scumbags. They'll do anything mm. for a bit of money. Uh, we meet Gail, who is very is also the name of the character in Scream, but turned up to like extreme levels. She is played by Cherry O'Terry, I believe is how you pronounce that. Uh, she's not really in this film a lot. Despite being like a main character in the first Scream, she was barely in it. I kind of, I don't know, I kind of felt like we saw enough of her. We saw enough, yeah, she wasn't the best. But yeah, she's given a report, this kid's fucking about in the background, she turns around, just decks him. <laughs> just one punch and that's it, done. So you've got all your news crews doing it, and you get the reporters for Black TV, mm-hmm. which again would be absolutely destroyed by Twitter, Twitter scum. Because it's a racial stereotype, but it, I'm sorry, it's funny. It's yeah. a funny joke because they're like, "Why people get murdered? We get the hell out of it." No, it is. It is completely funny, but it's just unfortunate with the sense of humor and how things have changed. It's funny, but people would somehow get offended by it in some mm-hmm. way. It's not. It's not exactly a negative thing. It's basically how they're portrayed in media. Mm. So they're talking about, oh, maybe we should get like an interview, and they're like, nah, they just pick the weirdest people to interview. They're just shorty. Yeah, shorty's And he goes, there. run, bitch! <laughs> what was it he said about her? Because they said something about, like, oh, wait. Something about her. Yeah. Ass, I think. yeah, and it was like, he said something, and me and you were just sitting there being like, oh my god. Because <laughs> that was such, like, that joke definitely wouldn't sit well. Yeah, no. There's a lot that really wouldn't sit well. Mm-hmm. Something about having a fine ass or something like that. It's just, it's just a comment that again you wouldn't have in a film that was made recently. Mm-hmm. Just because it's like they have a consensus they have to fill. I have my issues with how films are made now. There's way too many restrictions and rules like that. Yeah, I, f- I think I think if it's funny, it's funny. If you haven't seen the scary movie and you have your own. Um, trying to word this. Like, I know what I'm trying to say, but I'm struggling. Yeah, if you're kind of not comfortable with certain types of jokes or humours, or, you know, it can kind of upset you really easily, this film is really not going to be... No, it's, it's very much a film that you have to... As I say, the audience is more for, towards teenage boys mm. at the time. May just want to add that in there now, just in case there's someone who is going to watch hasn't seen it. Again, don't get offended by us reviewing this. Get offended by the film, but how are you? How are you going to get offended over a film that came out twenty years ago? Mm. Twenty three. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a film. It's just a film. People, humor is subjective. I get it. Gary movie was so big back then. Though, Gary movie. That was before it. people cared. Mm. That was before people were so, like, so sensitive to jokes. Mm. Because a joke is a joke. It, like, oh, no, I'm not getting into this debate again, but... Right, let's carry on. So humor, we... humor is subjective, like, but back in the day it was funny or it wasn't. There was no, like, community that was going to get offended by it. Mm. So we then cut to the fountain, which is also from the original screen. We then get to meet the rest of our main cast, which is Ray and Greg, played yeah. by Sean Wayans and <sighs> Lachlan Monroe. I've seen I've seen him in a few things, but never a film that's like decent. <laughs> like he he was in White Chicks, <laughs> of course. Him. He was probably in Riverdale. Oh, he was he was in Freddy vs. Jason, I remember that. Riverdale? Yeah, that's oh, like okay. a... I can't remember which one that is. Is that the Superman one? No, that's Smallville. Uh, no, Riverdale is that one on Netflix that I said that I wanted you to... Well, I... I want your property. Oh. oh, but he was in... Does anybody remember Little Man? Little Man, the, another Wayans film... Yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> For some context, he was 
again, not, I'm going to say this now, not to offend Bruce Willis, who won't be listening because we're a tiny little channel. <laughs> uh, he was in one of the recent Bruce Willis films. Yeah, three out of seven. Like three, I mean, IMDb always review bombs everything, but it's like middle meh films. Like ones that are just there to give Bruce Willis a paycheck because obviously now that we know what's going on with him, it's basically... A lot of people assume that's just because he, because he knew his condition was coming. He just wanted to get as much money as he can to set himself up. Mm-hmm. All power to him. But yeah, they, that doesn't mean they were good films. But he was in a, he was he's just known for being in crap, basically. So yeah. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, he was in also another Bruce Willis film. So we meet those guys. As I say, that that rounds up our cast. I, I've already made clear the only issue with Ray of him being like your stereotype ca- gay character, mm-hmm. and then it turns out he is. I mean, he isn't. He's in a relationship with Brenda, but he's he does a lot of things that a stereotypical gay character would do. Like he's mm-hmm. very attracted to men, <clears throat> but then he's. It doesn't make sense though, because he makes all these jokes about like doing men, and then at the end. He, no, I don't like men. Yeah, so that was like... Because eventually, weird. as I say, spoilers, Ray and Bobby are our killers in the end. And Bobby thinks they're in love with each other because Bobby Bobby is bi, I think he said. Mm. Or he just is gay. And then he thinks that... He thinks that Ray is as well. And Ray's like, no. He was like... Because what is it? Bobby's like, oh, well, you took me shopping and that. And yeah, what about that club? And he was like... I make good music. They play good music. And then it was like the shopping thing. And I was just because I wanted to go shopping. Yeah. And then it was like, that was when he said to him, oh, let's not get into this. <laughs> get back to like killing. Stuff. Yeah. But um, he give, he shows the report card because he, he's really fucked off. And it, it, it has all his grades as F and then stamped dumbass. <laughs> like, it's jokes like that that make this film work. Mm. It's not so, like, on the nose, like, slapstick. It's just silly little jokes that are slipped in like that. Little, little word, like, not wordplay gags, but, like, prop gags. Yeah. Just jokes that, sorry, Silver's, A, he's snoring his little head off, but he keeps twitching on my lap. Like. But, um, yeah, that made, that made me laugh. I love it. So then they go on about how about they kill, they, they were like, don't you think it's weird how... All this is happening a year after we killed that guy, and it's like, oh, here we go. And then we have, like, our flashback. We have our flashback to, as I say, the other half influence of, I know what you did last summer, because they're in the car, they're drinking, they're kissing. Obviously, you know, the usual of what teenagers... Well, you know. I don't think we did that, where where we were in the back of someone's car, drinking and kissing and... Well, none of us drive, and we don't know anybody yeah. drive, so, you know, <laughs> that would... It's a bit more difficult. Else. But, um, yeah. So, they drink, they kiss, they do <clears throat> interesting acts. Uh, Ray sticks a finger up Greg's ass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so then Bobby's like, oh, touch it, touch it, because he unzips his pants. Yeah, he, like, keeps saying to her, like, just, just, like... He's she's, horny. He's, he is extremely really horny. Hesitant. And this is, I don't think this today, with the fact that he did kind of pressure her. It is peer it. pressure, okay. and to a certain extent. Oh, no, that makes it even worse. Well, you know how she gets drunk and then they have sex with each other. Mm. You know that counts as... Uh... S.A. Mm. Yeah, and it, yeah, th- yeah, yeah, oh, that's just made this film a bit more, like, <laughs> for me. I just thought, oh, maybe not. I think we're maybe regretting this decision later about doing this. Well, we're only, we're only saying what's happened in the film. But now you think about it, it's like, oh. But ooh. you can kind of, as you look back on it, though, and you look at how everything is, different, you can kind of see what makes it well. Yeah, and you can kind think of times have changed. You can kind of see why that franchise kind of died a bit, and they 
stopped bringing them out, didn't they, after number five, I think. Yeah, I think so. I thought it wasn't fucking recording for a minute. <laughs> it's usually as the green up there. Because the last one I remember is the one with... Um, style of Viper. Is that name right? Yeah, I, I can't even remember that one, so... And the paranormal activity one they took the mick out of. I think they took the mick out of the grudge as well. What's the paranormal activity? The He did a film called A Haunted House. That's funny. I do like that film. It's probably not age well. I think that's just Sean and that one, I think. Anyway, so... So, Greg then sticks his head out the roof with his beer and gets repeatedly slapped in the face by branches, which is real. And then somehow he has, like, this bee thing. A beehive gets stuck on his head as well. <laughs> and he's just there flapping, because obviously he then knocks... He then knocks Cindy kind of in... Yeah, you know, she ends there. up being forced to give... Oh, my God. Worse. Because of the fact that he's got his feet standing on her back, so obviously she can't when get up. Yeah, it's oh, it makes it even worse. <laughs> it's just I, as, as we were saying, I was like, God, that sounds even more like SA. This is <laughs> <laughs> this is a big yikes. So, God, oh. yeah, no, they no, ran no. a guy over. And dumbass Buffy is like, we hit a boot! <laughs> she picks up this Wellington boot. <laughs> and then what is it? And the, the they're talking about like dumping his body, and the guy gets up and he's like, it's fine, don't worry about it. And then, he puts and then they throw a bottle at him by mistake. And oh, then that kind of. That knocks him out, and they still think he's dead. So they kind of put him in the boot, but as they put him in the boot, he wakes up. He wakes up again, and then they hit him hard again. But that's like, because then Shorty turns up, and he's like, what Him and his friends are hot box in the car. Is you know how this day and age, like you don't drink and drive, you don't do drugs. If he's doing, don't do drugs, kid. He's it's... doing drugs in a car where the smoke is coming out of the windows and driving. Yeah, and he's got a car full of people. As I say, stereotype stoner character. Mm. But um, yeah, he shows up and they're just like nothing. They mm. just pretend it didn't happen. And then Brenda is like. Trying to get rid of him, yeah, like as quick as possible, but without kind of without giving across that yeah. murdered someone. But um, yeah, they drag him to the pier, and the, the, I've got, I've got a quote from Brenda, which is we've already committed murder. So yeah. they just they just loot this poor dead again dead man's body. So everyone again, his clothes get ripped off really easily. Yeah, they, t- they, t- they, they again strip him down to his underwear. I think fallen. something was his ring was taken or something. His ring, yeah. his wallet, and I can't remember. And I don't think Cindy took anything. Cindy's not okay with it. She's there being like, we need to call the police. Like, we need to report this type of thing. But obviously, the one with blonde hair isn't having any of it. Yeah. They all just argue, like in the film, like in the real horror film. But um, we go back to it because they that all came up because she said she said about it being a year since they killed that guy. So then Gail walks up and is like, "Oh, I need to find out what's going on." Um, so we meet we meet Doofy, oh who is God. Doofy is between... Doofy is horrible. He is one of my biggest knacks with this film is the fact he's portrayed as. How would I say it? Mentally handicapped? And someone... I'm trying to remember autism. Hello again, we're back. Sorry about that, we just had an issue on the technical side. Uh, so yeah, um, as we say, he is an offensive stereotype of someone who has a... There we are, that's it, thanks to that a mental disorder. 
Mm-hmm. So, or meant, as you would say, a disability, however you would think. He is, like, 90% of his jokes are just, he has a disability, he's stupid. What a moron. Yeah. Which, as we say, would not fly nowadays. Oh, it definitely, like, no, you know. It was probably relatively offensive back then, but nowadays it's like, no. Not with the fact that we go on so much about hidden disabilities, race and awareness, you know. And rightfully, and rightfully so, because it's yeah. been, it's not a debate we're going to get into, but it is used as the butt of a joke for a lot of things, and this film is one of those things. Mm. Well, I know it's a parody film, and it's literally there as like, because obviously you've got you've got Ray who's a stereotype, but this is punching down significantly. But then at the end of the film, he's completely fine. He walks completely fine, and he speaks completely fine. Yeah, he's used as a he he do as I say spoilers. Uh, well, we've already got through the spoilers, but that doesn't make sense then. Because if you remember, he went off in the car, didn't he? With Gail. Well, no, I just, I just thought you have, you have Ray and Ray and Bobby have that bit where obviously Ray turns around and sh- uh, Bobby turns around and shoots Shorty, mm. which is meant to be obviously Bobby and Stu, uh, Stu and is it Billy, mm. Billy and Scream, but then Ghostface is still another character. Yeah, because which if you remember at the. Uh, I know it's Doof- Doofy is revealed as our ghost face, but they still have Bobby and Ray in there as like your replacements for Stu and Billy and Scream, who were revealed as the killers in that film. Mm. So they had, but they were they did say that there was another killer that they were this was the perfect crime. They said they're a copycat. Oh yeah, they did say they were a copycat. So I reckon that they were trying to copy Ghostface, but obviously they did a really rubbish job of it. Yeah, and also, I don't know if... It's never really clarified, but I don't know if they were just... If they were just about to kill Cindy as their first killings, or if Ghostface has been involved killing people also with them killing people. Yeah, I think it's because throughout the film, if there's two killers, he's always, every killer that's took part in the film, there's always been one ghost face on its own. It hasn't been a screen. Oh, you're on about scary movie. No, no. Yeah, there's always been one ghost face. But so, uh, what I'm trying to say yeah. is, they don't explain whether or not they've been killing people at the same time as ghost face, or if... Cindy and Shorty were meant to be like our, uh, like their first kills to be copycats. It's never clarified. Mm. But anyway, yeah. So Doofy again, played by Dave Sheridan. I don't, I don't know him really from anything else. But that the character of Doofy doesn't really bother me now. He is just used as a bot for mm. every joke. So we then go into the classroom where there is this very horny teacher who's, like, not breastfeeding, but, like, comforting a baby, and she gives it back to one of the students. Yeah, that would never swing now. (laughs) That is illegal, for a start. Um, I know it's, like, I think in America, (laughs) high school, you go up to 18. But in the UK, high school stops at 16. And mm. college is mandatory for up to 18. So, in the context of UK, that is illegal. Um, <laughs> for the US, that is still not good. But then she's like, she says to one of the she other... She says to kids, another one, she's like, I'll see you after class. And then so, they're both like, Kim and his friend are like, yeah. They're like, yeah. Like, it's like, like, she's not the most attractive person they're going... Yeah. So I don't understand what you I don't know, do what you want. But we then meet a character that when I first wrote the note I thought is Wow, well, throwaway character, what's the point? But we meet Heather, who is the nerdy character that gives oh the God, speech in the Heather classroom. Like... She is really irritating. Really character. Character. I know she's eager to learn and everything. Good it's just stay in school kids. <laughs> 
But she is <laughs> awful. <laughs> she is portrayed by someone named Molly Shannon. Again, I unfortunately don't know her from anything else. Um, then we get a Halloween reference where she looks out the window and ghost faces just jauntily stood there waving at her. <laughs> and she looks at the desk and it's got the note that says, I know what you did last Halloween. And then it's like, because when she sees that note, we then have a cut scene of like her and Bobby having like, a picnic. Yeah, and she, he's like forcing a sausage down her throat. <laughs> so it's like... And then it what cuts... It, it then cuts back to another note that says, no, not that Halloween. <laughs> and it's like, how does this person know about this? Mm. And I, I know it's like, haha, funny, because she remembered the wrong thing, but... But could it be the did son? Did Doofy know that... I've just now had a thought. Would Doofy be the son to the guy that was killed? No. They say it's not. Okay. But Doofy only knows because he overheard the conversation... But what I mean is, how would they know that... How would he know that she and Bobby went on that date? That's, it's weird. Yeah. It's weird. That's not a lot of logic. It's just there as, like, a family guy cut away gag. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, where am I? We then meet Mr., uh, the principal, whose name is Mr. Squiggy. <laughs> Which, because it's been a while since I've seen this, I completely forgot that Doofy was the killer and I thought it was him. I was thinking of a different film. I think it might... Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Let me know in the comments, but it's... um, It's a horror movie that where the main villain is dressed up as Abraham Lincoln. And the... the spoilers. The principal is revealed as the killer in that. I might have got them mixed up because they're very yeah, similar. Really weird voice. He had a very, like, cartoony voice. He was very high-pitched like this. <laughs> Uh, he's played by David Lander. And we also meet one of the best characters in the film, the Sheriff. Uh, the Sheriff, I don't think, ever gets a name. So in my notes, he's just Sheriff. But he is uh, an, a very strange character, but funny. Mm. So yeah, basically, they just ask her. We, do, we don't get the pictures yet, which is a shame. But we'll get into yeah. that. But yeah, they ask us some questions. We get the lock. We get our lock. We get the locker room scene after a football game. Are when you... I say football, <laughs> I mean American football, which is irritating. Like literally, he stands there. Like, is it Ray, the one who? It's Ray. He's he's doing the slap ass. Yeah, he's which I, like... every time I see that, I think of the Key and Peele skin. And then there's just this one like guy who walks past naked and then you just he goes that's ass and just, so just bangs like, his ass. I said to you like do they generally do that and I think you said they do culture is the word I was thinking of but it's part of the like American football or like sport culture is to slap each other on the ass. when we're done here I'll show you the... Does... That is how... that's why it's like criticised but um the killer leaves a picture of Greg in his locker, and here's a very, very explicit picture of a tiny penis. They didn't leave any details out. On no, that. it is like a fully, well, no, I think he is fully naked in that picture, but it's just like lower down, like mm. belly and downwards, which makes me concerned of how they got that picture. I don't think that was the actual actor. I think that's somebody else. Oh, no, was... but I don't want to know how they got... <laughs> How they got the picture of like it's it's a Polaroid like it's taken on a camera, so somehow I feel like behind the scenes they found someone who had a tiny penis and just. Would you mind if we just take a little, <laughs> little picture of that? Oh dear. That's the fact he takes it with him and he like. He storms out and he shows it to his friends and Buffy is laughing at it, which really confused me because it's like. Those two were like really horny in the car. And they're dating the... as well. They're and dating. No offense, Buffy. The fact that she's, you know, wearing short clothes and she was all over him in the car. I honestly think that they would have done it before. So it's it just crazy. makes sense for her to she laugh it like she's never seen yeah. it. That's just what really confused me. This this film sort of throws a lot of scenes together, but it doesn't. Makes sense all the time. 
Yeah. Like how n- it's they laugh at the fountain and then it's a beauty pageant. Yeah, with um, Buffy is the model whose name is Miss Palacio, which means um, performing actions with one's mouth on a romantic partner. So <laughs> they all they all slowly leave, and she's like, "I'm going to act," and she basically watches as Greg is killed by. Ghostface, who again isn't specified who it is, if it's him or not. Forget about, forget about it. And then ultimately his throat is slit and he dies. So that's fine. That's one character less that I don't care about. Because <laughs> he is an irritating character. It's the fact that she really gave a crap about him, and then as soon as she won the pageant, she's, she's like, like, "I won," and then she just barges out. And then she like says to Cindy, "Oh fuck, Greg." Yeah, fuck Greg, my boyfriend of several years. So then they're talking because for some reason, yeah, it doesn't that doesn't make sense either. But she's also like, oh, where is Greg? But she watched him die. And obviously they're talking in the hallway, and Ghostface is in the background dragging his body off, and mopping the floor yeah, of blood. Like the three of them, like obviously, because Cindy, Bobby, and her talking about him being like, where are they? And he's just casually like cleaning up behind him. And dragging a bin bag, and you're just like, if you turn around, he's right there. Yeah. I know they've deliberately done that for the film, but it's just like, how can you not see out the corner of your eye someone dragging a bin bag or mopping up? Or even hear it. Mm. Oh, a bin bag's going to make a lot of fucking noise. That rustle went crazy. So yeah, we then go back to Cindy's house. She then gets a couple of phone calls from Bobby... And then the phone call from the killer, she runs downstairs to the front door, turns around, screams, and then like, zoom into the camera hits her in the face. Yeah, it's like they know they're in a, in a film, don't they? Yeah. It's, it's dumb jokes like that where, where it reminds you it's a film, mm. rather than, like, it's like, it's, it has more real to it. Yeah. And that, that made me laugh, because she's like, ow. <laughs> It doesn't zoom in close enough and then back out again. It literally hits her in the face and she reacts to it. And then he's like, I'm in the house. He's on the phone to her and he's like, I'm in the house, Cindy. And it, like, she, he's like, where am I? Where am I? And he's, he's hiding behind the sofa and his little feet are kicking up in the air. <laughs> uh, and she's like, you're behind the couch. And he's like, what? what? How? How do you know that? I can see your feet, Mr. Killer. Yeah. Or something like that. So, yeah, he then is like, wait, 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 close your eyes. And he's trying to, like, hide. He's, he, like, hides under... He tries to hide... Oh, I just heard the cat. He tries to hide under the rug in the living room and just behind the curtain. And then he really... She's like, uh, I can't see you. And then he chases her. So she then runs up these, like... There are a lot of stairs, yeah, I realise. I thought that staircase was a bit weird because it's like she's endless. Yeah, it's like she throw like a vase and then a yeah. She's like running up there. She throws a vase, a bike, a grandma comes out and she piano. You know, throws a piano down. He dodges it, but he (laughs) runs the grandma over. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know if you can count that as a kill or not, but grandma is flattened. So then Bobby conveniently arrives like Billy does in the film and is arrested for obviously possibly being the killer because it's heavily implied that he is. But Well, he had the phone. He had the he phone. Had that fell out once he, when he, got, when he climbed in Cindy's window again. Excuse me, yeah. So then Cindy sits... Fucking Christ. I hate the name Cindy. It sounds too much like Sydney for me. <laughs> That's why. That's probably why they kept cocking it up during the filming. Mm. But then the sheriff, the sheriff, the sheriff shows her some interesting images of him in a speedo or something. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. If that picked that up. Oh, I've got the wire on the cat. He was not happy with that. <laughs> um. So she, those pictures are fucking weird. Yeah, they're like... He's like, what do you think of this? Quick. And it's just like him posing with his underwear. She's like, no. Mm. 
And that actually, as we di- we discussed about it, how that genuinely seemed like the actor, mm. rather than they would like got some weird like. Again, sorry if that's picking up my mic is best. Sorry, there we are. Like it's definitely the actor they somehow persuaded to stand outside in his pants. <laughs> I mean. All the power to you. Do what you want. But I wouldn't do that myself. So then we come outside because all the news is back. And there is something we only just realised. Because Gail, Gail is stood in front of a plaque that reads the name of the sheriff. Well, it doesn't. It's like, I don't know the place they live in. But it, it's so-and-so sheriff's department. Founded in 2017. And this was done in 2000. This was made in 2000. Well, it came out in 2000. So I was like, it's not a shot that lingers on it as like a joke and then it pans away. It sort of shows it and then moves. It doesn't linger on it. Mm. But it's like, why make that a joke? It's literally like a, oh, that's weird. Anyway. But when I saw that, I was like, how does that make any sense? Like, I know that's the point. It's meant to be like, what the fuck? But but 2017 like, hadn't, wouldn't have even happened. No, it just seemed weird. It just seemed really fucking weird and pointless of a joke to put in. Anyway, so they're all trying to get Cid- Cindy's attention and Gail, scr- I think he scr- she screams at her, you look fat or something. She said some sort of insult, then she just turns around and literally just punches her, her, yeah. And then we get the greatest scene in the film. We get the one and only... You know the scene I'm talking about. We have Shorty on the phone. <laughs> the uh, the very famous, very outdated... What the- <laughs> I didn't even know that was actually from an advert. So yeah, I, you didn't know it was from an advert. I grew up like film. film. No, it's, as we found out, because I had to explain it, it's for Budweiser, which you thought it was from a film because you saw it long after it came out, correct? Mm-hmm. So the advert for Budweiser came out in 1999, the year before this film came out. So it was a bit more relevant of a joke to make. But it was it's basically a joke because obviously another word for weed or joint is bud. And obviously everyone everyone who drinks it refers to it as a bud. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, aha, uh-huh, uh, just nothing much, just watch watching a game, having a bird. It's just like haha. Uh-huh. Pick up the phone. Hey yo, pick up the phone. Uh, Yo, and they go, Wada! <laughs> Again, iconic. I think me, Morgan, and Jacob. Wow, I think it's the first time I've made reference to him in, in like a review. Uh, Depressed Dave, the ghost, whatever you want to call him on here. Um, he's he's not been in a lot recently, but we haven't played with him much, bless him. We really should play something with him. <laughs> but, um, Anyway, yeah, it's still iconic. We still do that to this day, pretty much. But, um... So we then go back to... Is it Buffy's house? Buffy and Doofy's house. Because Cindy goes there because, of the, because, obviously, the attack happened in an actual house. And she went, she went feeling safe on her own. So... <laughs> so I don't know. It's near, it's near the end of the film and the review, so I'm slowly shutting down. But, um, Ghostface then calls, and she's like, she's like, Do-, uh, um, Buffy and Doofy's mum call for Do- Doofy, and Doofy emerges. Oh my oh god. My god. <laughs> he emerges with the Hoover, which was referenced in a joke earlier about him fucking the Hoover. And. Jesus Christ, the man is packing heat <laughs> through the bulge of his, like, Y fronts. It is, like, the size of his thigh. I didn't we were both, like, fucking hell. I didn't even 
obvious until you pointed it out, and then you went back and pointed it out, and I was like, oh my god. It's just this, oh my god. But man, man's packing heat. <laughs> but Jesus. That's just the, that's just it. We can leave it there with that scene. <laughs> but, um... They're then in the school cafeteria. Short, Shorty then directly references Scream. It's like, yeah, I've seen this all before in a movie called Scream. Like, same dialogue and everything. <laughs> so they then, they then arrange a party, which is like the end of uh, Scream, because of course. But then Cindy is like, don't tell anyone. Cindy's like, don't it's tell like... anyone. Else. I can't remember what he shouts. He's but like, oh, yo, a party at Cindy's tonight. And then drunk, white people for ev- drunk white girls for everyone or something like that. So, yeah, she then bumps into Bobby. That's his name. Oh, I forget everyone's names every time in these reviews. No, no one would mention these characters' names this much. Oh, excuse me. Um... They sort of argue for a minute, her and Bobby, and then she does that little runaway. Like yeah. she does that sort of like Ooh! arms flailing, legs <laughs> up in the air, deliberate like stupid run because of how how Sydney runs in the first scream. So we then have the girls' locker room where we meet. Oh, there's another character I don't like. It's it's a character which. I don't want to say if they are trans or not. Or if they are pretending to be... Oh, no, this is so much worse. Are you talking about Mr. Man? Miss Man, yeah. Miss Man. Because she, it's a teacher that has a pair of balls. Which, if you think about it, means... If they're trans, fine. Do what you want. But if they're not and it's a man in disguise, they are trying to... Um perv on girls in high school but miss man i had to explain to you is not played by a man it is played by a bodybuilder and actress named jane truck trucker it's it's spelled t-r-c-k-a um who wow why would you take a role like this like oh oh this character majorly bothers me as well (laughs) <laughs> now that I think about it, now that now that you think about the ins and outs of the character, it's like, oh, uh, it's a bit, it's a bit like, mm, 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 mm. yeah. So Miss Man then takes in, is it Cindy? She takes into the office. Yeah, because Buffy basically took the mick out of her by using her phone and like playing yeah. that call of the killer. Didn't yeah, so she takes her into the office and her balls fall out of her shorts. And it is, oh, it's disgusting. She's like, you can come talk to me any time. <laughs> it's, oh, no. Mm. There are many things wrong with that character. I, for some reason, in my head, I swear the teacher died. Like, Miss Man died. I honestly can't remember. I don't know no, why. She didn't actually die. So then it goes to the the locker room again, but it's fine. Everything's clear. Buffy's friends then leave her behind. These literally no name characters that we've never met. Uh, she's actually... left alone, and I oh, I noticed this. I may have noticed it in pa- passing before, but the school's name is revealed as B A Corpse High School because <laughs> it says it on the wall behind her. It's just again, it's another like set design joke that's pointless mm. it's just something you go oh look at that ha huh, that's stupid isn't it mm-hmm. so buffy is left alone the killer arrives she's like oh are you the psycho killer like should i run now yeah she's like because like he's even like tapping his own head so like he's he's very sitting, confused he's sitting there thinking like she's really like psycho this bitch cray cray <laughs> so she then runs around she's like oh is this where I'm meant to break, like, break my leg? And she breaks her own leg and it, like, sticks out, like, the bone. <laughs> it's very, like, outdated makeup effects, but still gnarly. So then Ghostface then decapitates her with a meat cleaver, and her head is still talking. Yeah, stick you, you would be bleeding. 
You would, but also... Did you know your head still stays, like, conscious for, like, ten seconds after it's been removed from the body? It's not enough to think. It's not enough to talk, especially when your throat has the vocal cords mm. in it. But then he's clearly still sick of it, so he chucks her head into a bin that says lost and found. <laughs> Then they go outside, there's the teacher on the roof, who was suicidal. Uh, in another reference to I Know What You Did Last Summer, Cindy starts yelling, what you waiting for? <laughs> and the teacher goes, yeah, what am I waiting for? And then as he jumps, he goes, fuck you, and then dies. He just goes, dead. <laughs> I clapped and I made the cat jump. He's deaf. I don't know why that made him jump. Time. Yeah, he's now got his paw on my finger. Oh no, he's tucked back in. <laughs> but I clapped, and that was enough for him to get. He, I think we blew his cover. <laughs> but um, yeah, and he. Oh, that's completely threw me off. <laughs> we then cut to lovers look again. It's a lot. I, I swear, all I say is we then cut to. <laughs> we then have a new scene at lovers lookout where Heather, that character, that nobody character from earlier, makes a grand return. To die. Because she's found, she's found by Gail. And, then, and the, her cat. And a cameraman whose name is Kenny. I, I feel bad for him. He was... Well, he he was a, sticks up with a... He was a good character, but he... Yeah, but even the character in the original... In Scream puts up with a lot of Gail shit. But yeah, Heather is there and is stabbed to death. Oh, God, excuse me. It, I will just clarify, it's midnight now, I'm very tired. But yeah, she's stabbed to death, and then Ghostface is like, get the camera out of my face, get out the camera out of my face, like your typical. This, this, and then Gail and Kenny run off into the woods. This scene was... Is a disgusting scene. And a very Blair Witch reference, they run off into the woods. Kenny bangs his head and is never seen again. He like drops the camera, I think he's killed. He's off screen, if so. Oh, then he's just now tricked about that. It's yeah, because he hits his head and she has the camera and then yeah. never see him again. And she snots all over the camera, which is a reference to Blair Witch, because at, not just because of how the scene is shot, but in Blair Witch, she does snot a lot, but not to the extent that Gail does. As I say, Mick, if I turn to my last page of notes, I just have Kenny Dar- Kenny dead, question mark. <laughs> so I, it was only then when I thought, did they kill him off? Or? I think they must have done. They must have done, because he's never seen it all mentioned again. So Brenda and Ray are then at the scene watching a film that has a cameo by one of their brothers, whose and name again, I forget. character is annoying. Who, Brenda? Yeah. Brenda is in this film, but she does get better. But she's just the loud person in the cinema who's just yelling and talking the whole time. Ray then goes to the toilet. Uh, and, oh my god. He finds a glory hole and a dick goes through the side of his head, through his ear. Well, I thought it was a knife. No. But I think in Scream 2, it is a knife that gets the actual guy. Mm. A bigger gets stabbed through the ear. But yeah, a dick goes through his ear, because get it, he likes... He doesn't like penis. So Brenda is then joined by our killer, who, it would make sense here if it was Ray, because mm. he was on the scene at the time. But it's again, it's never clarified. And the crowd stabs the shit out of her and beats her. And she's, she's lined up, she ends her bit in the film as clearly meant to be dead. Mm. She then collapses in the theatre like um, Will Smith's ex-wife. I can't remember a fucking name. The li- lich. Oh, I don't know if it is her is ex-wife. I don't know if it's the one. The one from the the internet meme of keep my wife's name out your damn mouth. Oh, that. Oh, I don't remember her name. I'm trying my best. Anyway, she dies in that, and then that's clearly the reference. Is it Jay? Yeah, Jada Pinkett Smith. Or Jada Pinkett. Anyway. So, 
they stab a shit out of her and beat her. She's lined up to die, but if you've seen the sequels, you know she comes back. Mm. These are connected films. These aren't like one-offs, where it's just like the same characters, but different stories. But well, that is the film. This isn't like an anthology where they're all like different. I don't know. So then we go to the party, which is in full swing now. We meet this random character, like this random girl who's like, where's the beer? And like, it, it, I, I don't even think she gets a name. No, she's just like getting the beer and then he's there and she yeah. gets scared by a She gets by a ca- scared by a cat and then scared by a horse and, and then, then by the killer. Um, No offence, she's not a small lady. And no, she she's tries, a larger lady. And she tries and goes through the cat flap to escape. Now, surely anybody plus size. Well, of course, well even so, they even try it in screen because <laughs> then she gets taken up and her head's crushed. But in this, it is, again, it's a fat joke. The door gets stuck, it starts malfunctioning, and then the entire, like, ceiling collapse on her mm. when she's in the dog, the cat flap. It's, very, it's just a fat joke that, again, would not fly anymore. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. But, um, yeah, pointless character that's there to replace an actual character from Scream. So then Bobby then arrives at the party. Uh, Cindy, by this point, is fucking wasted. And horny. And horny, but again, that doesn't sit right with me because it is technically SA. Because that does count, by the way. I don't know if you know that. Well, Being under the influence can be can't used as a... Because you can't, really you can't give consent, yeah. Because you're not... Well, you can't. You don't know what you want when you're drunk. No. So they go upstairs. Uh, they go upstairs. Oh, I do have the next part of that scene in a minute. But then we have Shorty, who is in the basement, which is revealed later on. But it's weird. Shorty's with his friends, and they turn a fish tank into a big bong. Yeah, I feel really sorry for the fish. Just. And yeah, they never really clarify what happens with the fish, whether or not they left it in there and just boiled it <laughs> alive. But, um, yeah, the killer then arrives, and then the fucking killer gets baked. He's like, I'm so fucking high. But the thing is, though, in one of those scenes, his tongue did hang out, didn't he? Yeah, that's when he was doing what's that. <laughs> it hangs out through the mask. But um, we then go back to the oh god the love making scene upstairs. That is that is a scene. <laughs> like he then finally gets the bell off and bats fly out, don't they? Yeah. He literally and she's like, oh, it's been a while. And then like literally a big like hedge of bush comes out of her knickers. Mm-hmm. That's with a K and not not a racial slur. I'm saying by the way, panties. There you go. They came out of her panties, her underwear. I'm not saying a racial slur. This disgusting pubic hair that is so bad that he uses a head strimmer. Yeah, and even goggles. Well. They have safety goggles to protect themselves from debris. <laughs> it is disgusting. And then she gets on top of him and she rides him until he finishes. And my man explodes with his climax. Yeah, that then literally like all his body back. sucks in and he gets really skeletal. He survives though, he doesn't die, man. But it literally is like with enough force that she's thrown against the ceiling. <laughs> so then we go back to the basement, the killer is rapping and when he raps he slashes his knife around in the air and that somehow kills all of well, them. Well not only he's got a knife in one hand and a hook in the other. And... It might have been the hook he used to do it. No, and he, maybe had, my he mistake. had the knife as well. Either way, he slashes something around and kills all of Shorty's friends, but not mm. Shorty. Yeah. Yeah, and Shorty's like, that was really cool. <laughs> Never mind, like, all my family, all my friends are dead. So the killer then attacks Bobby upstairs, and the two of them run... The Cindy... Yeah, the two, by the two of them, I mean Cindy and Bobby run down. They run down the stairs, and then I, I said to you that the house was weirdly empty for only a couple of... Sorry, so I just bonked him on the head. 
the house is weirdly empty despite a, despite a party being in full swing not yeah, that long ago. Yeah, it was packed. <laughs> so then Shorty runs out from the basement, and Bobby then Bobby then does the same thing that happens in Scream. He goes, we all go a little crazy sometimes, and just shoot Shorty. It's just like, okay, shoots him in the lung, and then of course because he's a stoner, smoke comes out of it. Yeah, very funny. It's just the most random. Ray is also revealed as the killer, but also not gay, as we discussed earlier with the shopping trip and the club. Yeah. That was just weird. That was really weird. Ray is then stabbed through the back by the real killer and is killed by him, but also Bobby is as well. No, um, Bobby Bobby shoots him. Yeah, uh, I didn't actually do. I didn't actually have in my notes the bot. Oh, hang on. Bobby got oh no, they bring the dad out first, who's like tied up with ball yeah. gags and chains. It was very weird. Ray's then stabbing Bobby. He stabs him loads. Mm. He stabs him a lot more than they do. There's a lot of scream. But also, he mentioned about how shows were get good shows were getting cancelled. Yeah, they said TV shows don't make a man crazy. Cancelling TV shows does. Which I feel... And it's ironic considering we watched it on Netflix. <laughs> I feel like that's a future reference to Netflix. Yeah, that was very uh, fourth wall break and meta. There you go. So Ray stabs Bobby loads and he kills him by accident because he gets very angry. So then Ray gets stabbed in the back by the or by our killer that they were copycat and somehow. So they're both dead. They fall on top of each other, so it looks like they're both fucking each other. Again, gay jokes. Uh, Cindy and the killer then have a fight, and they do a lot of Matrix stunts. Like, they jump up in the air, and it freeze frames and spins around. And then Ghostface actually does, like, the leaning back, and his back his back does get stuck, which realistically would probably happen. And then he cracks it and gets it back. And then that's that awful, like, CGI of her, like, tap dancing in the air. Yeah, that was really It looked terrible. like a bloody Force ghost from Star Wars. So then, oh, that was bad. So then she throws him out the window, the police arrive, and he escapes. Which is different, because in Scream, that's basically when the film ends. Because mm. obviously, uh, Billy and Stu, um, this could come back and bite me in the arse, because I really want Stu to come back. Billy is definitely dead. Stu has his head hit by the TV and electrocuted, but if they don't bring, if they don't bring him back, I'll be pissed. We will probably review that when that comes out. Mm. Uh, so then so they go to the police station again with the sheriff. And Cindy then comes to the realisation that Doofy is the killer. Because it, she, the sheriff was like, it has to be someone who know, who has with everyone. Mm. And then it, co- it has like a montage of people saying how Doofy knows the victim. So it then cuts to outside where Doofy is walking off in his uniform and his horrible, horrible, like, effects to make him look disabled. And he strips it all off and then he's suddenly this, like, hunky dude. Well, like, a, very much like a character from Greece. Yeah, cigarette in the mouth. Jumps. Yeah, slick back hair. He jumps into a car with Gale, which makes sense considering how Gail and Dewey, Dewey ended up together. A, for real. Because mm. you didn't know that Gail and Dewey got together and married in real life. Uh, but also, I don't know. I now. So basically, they get together. They've been together since she basically seduced him. <laughs> so yeah, that's how our film ends. We then, that is literally how it ends. He escapes. And she's just... And she gets run over by a car. Because she's like... In the middle of the road, spinning around. Yeah. That's how the film ends. I've seen this film several times, but there is a post credit scene I hadn't seen. And it's of stereotype Doofy. Like, pre-reveal Doofy. Breaking up with his hoover. And then he fucks it one more time. <laughs> and it is disgusting. And that's it. Film ends. End of film. So, that's our little run over. Uh, now we give our opinion on it. 
So, um, what's your thoughts? What would you? How would you summarize the film? It was one of those films that I used to be able to watch like quite a few times, but now that you've kind of we've gone more into it like this. It was I a film we enjoyed think... until we reviewed it. And realized that I there's can't a lot see more. everything that's wrong with it now and why. Like, it's not acceptable. No, no. It doesn't make it... It doesn't... Not being horrible, like, I think it's had its time and it's... Yeah. I mean, as we say, it's 24 years old. It's probably best it stays buried, but I don't think I could watch it again, no. No. Now, although I've seen it in a different... Also, I just thought, is this our first review of this year? Yes. When did Megan come out? January, actually, sorry. Oh, well, but never mind then. I thought it had been longer, but... but yeah, uh, yeah, it's definitely... It's definitely been through its prime, and obviously, that's to be expected. We are reviewing this 23 years after it yeah, came it's, out. it's best to archive. Yeah, it's there just to give our thoughts, and just to make a bit of fun of it, and unfortunately open your eyes to the realities of these characters. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, I mean, watch it if you want. It's definitely, as I say, it's a film that's gone... It's, it's had enough. It's It's been memed to death on the internet. It's had too many sequels. It's heyday. It's definitely come and gone. But if you want it for the old nostalgia, if you're a bit more... Um, uh, how would you say it? If you're a bit more open to having references that wouldn't be so obvious now. Like like that guy that gets through the window, I have no idea what the f*** it's about until I just googled it earlier. But like, yeah. Go for it with an open mind. Definitely tr- watch it without trying to think about what we've said about some of the characters mm. and the jokes. But it's... Just be ready... Just don't watch it if you're going to get offended by some of the things we've brought up. It's it's a funny film, but it has its unfortunate mistakes when mm. it comes to some of the. I think jokes. the only best bit in it is when they do the what's up. The was the what's up is more iconic than the advert. Mm. But if honestly, just watch, just look that up and watch it for that. Just watch the scene. If you haven't seen the what's up meme from twenty three years ago now. You're an idiot. You've seen it at some point. Please don't pull on my moustache. I'm sorry, I fall off with my hair. There never is. Look how long it is. But yeah, just go with, go and just roll with it. Maybe have a drink and just go in and just be ready for stupidity. Maybe and watch it when you're drunk. Maybe watch the set. Maybe watch the second one instead because this it has a lot less offensive. Have a drink. Sit down. Put this on background noise if necessary but it's we're watching this sober so that may be why we're so critical reviewing it so yeah um what would you what would you rate it out of 10 four rotten tomatoes no they do it in percent oh. out of 10 what would you give it four mm. um let me let me rephrase that before before this review what would you have given it I'll be like, I'm going to be a really bad person. Yeah. Before we pointed out all the, uh, the hidden hidden meanings that they could have been intentional, they could have not been. But some of the things that aren't so obvious for people casually watching it. I would definitely give it like a five myself. Because... Again, looking past all the offensiveness of some of the um, jokes and other things like that, there is some good humour and some iconic moments in there. And overall, a pretty solid parody. Because mm. Scream was meta enough on its own, but then it got parodied by this. Which is good. It was a good parody. Like The jokes were good. The acting was pretty good, really. Mm-hmm. It seemed, it seemed like everyone had a good time while they were making it. That's what's important. 
But my god, the sequels. The sequels went a bit overboard. But um, yeah. Uh, because it's technically classed as a horror movie, I will give my my personal favourite kills and least favourite kills. Uh, you threw the notepad on the floor, so I can't remind myself of it. Give me one moment. <laughs> Oh, well, I do that for every horror movie, I think. Oh, I've now got to scroll through to try and find it. Um, favorite kill, favorite kill, kill. Shit. Uh, let's have a look, shall we? <laughs> I knew what it was, but we love like three pages. I do have three pages of notes, and most of them were just the gags. I can't remember. I'd have to say Buffy. Buffy breaking her own neck, uh, own leg, and then getting decapitated. But definitely <laughs> favorite. Uh, mainly just because the the leg the leg effects were still pretty gnarly, if not mm. basic. And obviously, it's got the most gore, and it's it's uh, the, the the um the build up was a bit shit. Obviously, with the the like, oh, are you gonna kill me? That did get a bit, excuse me, a bit irritating. But best kill easily because of gore and stuff like that. Least favorite. Um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to say Kenny, the cameraman. Um, really? Even though he didn't get killed on. That's what I'm saying. He's the least favorite. Oh, that's back to my bloody notes about Santa's sleigh. Uh, Kenny easily least favorite kill. Uh. Mainly because it's never com- like clarified whether or not he actually died or not, but then he's like immediately forgotten about. But if we want, if we, if you want to be pedantic and t- t- like say, oh, he might not have been killed. Uh, else dies. Uh, yeah, I just realised that Buffy's death I put put above that random girl who gets crushed, but. Uh, I think I'll have to go with again. I'm just I'm not panning a video out. I'm genuinely looking for my notes to remind myself. Uh... Greg, there you go. That's his name. Greg, just because it's just a throat slit and he dies. That's it. <laughs> I liked everyone else's death. He just sort of gets throat slit. So, Kenny, if you want to play by, he's dead or he's not, yeah. But Greg, if that technically doesn't count. Well, there we are, then. We've come to the end of it. Maybe it's just on a Instagram. <laughs> Silver's asleep. Uh, thank you for tuning in. This may be longer than I want it to be, but we're at the end now, so... Thank you for our, listening to our very, very out, uh, very late review of the film. We just thought it'd be funny... We just thought it'd be funny to give our thoughts on a film that was old, but also was good. Well, it was good for its time. But unfortunately, I may have just, I may have just made the point that everybody was now going to be like, "Wow, that film was worse than everyone thought." Or I might just be late to that that idea that it's too late. Well, it's outdated and it's offensive. So yeah. Uh, again, thank you for listening to us. Uh, we have, well, I've been me. Don't know where that was gone. Uh, Silver has been, Amelia has been here listening yeah, to my <laughs> ramblings and giving her own thoughts, of course, and reminding me of scenes I skipped out on because it was boring me. Why, why are you looking at an advert for my work? Um, <laughs> because they've got an iridescent marble toilet seat. Hell yeah, toilet seat, guys. <laughs> Prime content. And because it's glittery. What does it say? Wow. <laughs> I hope I didn't pick that up. Anyway, wait, we were, we, um, if I did pick it up, I'm sorry. If it didn't, we won't, um, we'll, we'll leave that to your imagination about that, what that was. So eventually we'll. Well, I think we only have the first four on DVD, so we'll have to track down the fifth one. Yeah, thanks for listening. We'll get round to something soon. 
just a little update. Morgan's taking a bit of a break right now. We've still got some still got some Red Dead content for the next couple of weeks because he bulk recorded, but other than that, it may be another series of Moon and Media doing like we did with The Hobbit. But yeah, we'll still do a review. We'll get we'll probably get around to doing one next week. We don't know what to do that yet. We've still got a few lined up. It definitely won't be Scary Movie 2, so don't worry about it. We'll get around to that at some point. So yeah, thank you for listening. We have been reviewing bullshit and making fun of it. That's basically what this series is, really. <laughs> Anything you want to plug before you go? Before we go? No. No. I once, as always, we'll leave a link to uh, to Amelia's channel in the description. Well, thank you very much. We'll uh, catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye.